Hey guys, this is a kit that I'll be taking when I'm walking, uh, doing this walk in a fortnight. I'll go through it in a minute. It's uh, I'm really under the canopy here. I'll try and zoom in and see what I can do. And I'll go through each and uh, let you see what's what. We'll start with the rucksack. It's a 50 litre, because uh, that's all I'm reading. I got it for you. It's, uh, can't remember what I got it for you. The poles, mountain poles, I've had for years. Tried and trusted. The sack, waterproof sack bag I've had for ages as well. It's an Osprey. It fits up to 85 litres, so it's uh, fine. Right, coming along. <laughs> Put these on a recommendation of one of my mates. Yeah, it's the, the Crocs for um, after I finish walking. So I've been walking about the house with them, but I've not tried them outside yet, so I can't wait to try them. I want my sleeping bag, a really inexpensive pillar, if I can get that. Blow up pillar, 99 pence. And at the back of that, if you can see it, I don't know if you can, that's a survival blanket. Uh, come ground sheet. This one in here is my um, clothes. Next is my cook kit and my eating kit. So we'll start off with this. That's my. I went through this before. That's all my fire lighting stuff in there. A mess burner, which I made myself. Works a treat. Absolutely brill. There's the, the mess in there, and I made a wee stand for it, and I'll show you it later when it's up. Um, ex no wait in it at all, that's just for my coffees in the morning, my, my porridge. I've got a honey, honey stove. Uh, I've also got a solo stove, and I've done a lot of testing between the two of them, and this is absolutely brilliant. It's, uh, it gets off the heat out of it, very quick boiling water, so I'm taking this one, falls down to nothing, uh, don't even know I've got it. My utensils is a light my fire, titanium spork, my wee spatula that I made, and uh, pot grips, to cook uh, just a, I don't even know the make of it, but it's been well tried and tested. The lid is off a tin, a uh, paint tin. Uh, puts a treat in there. That's my grub that I'm taking. I'm not taking an awful lot of grub. Where I'm going, there's plenty of places for foods which I can get on the way or I can eat in the towns. Plastic bowl, a cup, an aluminium cup with a liner in it. Uh, I acquired that somewhere, so it does, it's good, keeps me going. My kneeling mat, water carrier, 5 litre water carrier. Next, waterproofs, don't have to go through them, it's army issue. Um, I managed to acquire them from somebody, very close, while he was in Afghanistan. I'm going to use them, but I've got to give them back when he, uh, he's down in England at the moment, so they've got to go back. But brilliant, really, really waterproof. The weather we've had lately, they work a treat. And because it's Scotland, um, we could get four seasons in a matter of minutes, so have got to take a decent pair of waterproofs. On next to my Keep Me Going, I've got a wee Sony Walkman radio. And I have a solar uh, charger, which is only nine quid. It works a treat. But this is the absolutely brill. It's a, a mini X speaker. It blasts it out. I'll uh, try and let you hear it later on. But that, one of the guys at work brought one of them in, and I thought, I'm going to have to get me one of them. Absolutely first class. Only about 14 quid. 
good bit of kit for a night time when I'm in my hammock. Right. My personal protection equipment, right. Arm measuring leather gloves. My gaiters, which I've had for ages. I don't know what that is, just something goes around my neck. Arm issue again. A bonnet. A sun hat. Um, that's all I'm taking, I don't need anything else. And on to some of my um, stuff that I, I might need. I've got some spare paracords. In there is the, so I've made up six guys for the, the tarp. An army issue uh, light, which is brill. Right. In there is uh, some spare tent pegs. Because I'm going up north, a mozzie net. My knife, I, uh, that's a more uh, robust. And I managed to get a, a sheath for it, and it looks the part really good. And my little saw, uh, just a cheapo, works a treat. And my uh, knife sharpener, you have to go name them, you cannot recognise them anyway. So that is all the kit I'm going to carry, and finally, the map. Right, it's a space I'd be, it's, I'm starting at Abbey Moor, and walking up to a place called Bucky. It's about 70 miles, and stupid me, I've only booked five days off. So, five days off plus two rest days. So I have no option, I've got to complete it in five days. It's all my kit. And uh, what I'll do, I'll let you see the speaker going. I don't know, I, you know what the honey stove is like. And what I'll do, I'll let you have a look. I'll get the wee uh, meth burner going. Um, I'll let you see that. So I'll catch you in a bit. So here we are with Lloyd Law. He's kicked some marvellous goals for Scotland in the past and has already kicked three today, looking to get Scotland to within a couple of points of the summer wins. Here it goes, long and high. It's got distance. Has it got accuracy? Yes, it has. He's done it. That is a tremendous well kick for Greg Laidlaw. Four successful penalties, and that gets the Scots back to a scoreline of Scotland 12, Samoa 14. Excellent half to start to the half. Sorry for, for Scotland, who probably we didn't have the best of first half, but the 42 minutes played and it's been a two point game and no, um, the message is given at half time, uh, settled the boys down and it's key now we continue with that good play. Laidlaw rescuing the Scots here, Stonk, the wee chip up the park, up this touch line, follows it himself, this is fair. Laidlaw rescued them after Samoa looked as though they were going to come charging through in Scots possession. Easy now to Wilson in midfield, Paul Wilson, son of the former all-black winger Brian Wilson. Now, I think Marius Jonker has uh, spotted some infringement. He's one of the assistant referees. And um, we're just looking at it. Oh, there was a late tackle on Greg Laidlaw by one of the Samoans. I think it was Big Mule Pola, the loose head drop. Now, I know for a fact that Peter Wright will be sitting in the studio in Glasgow licking his lips at um, John Lacey and Marius Jonker having a little chit chat here and they'll be saying the assistant refs come in with a contribution one way or the other. So, that's it, it's a penalty I think against Samoa and it's back where Laidlaw was late tackled which is just outside Scotland 22. It. I think that's what's going to happen. Looks kind of like it. Yes, it is. And, um, well, there we go. The Scots were away up in the Samoan half, and now they find themselves back almost at their own 22. So, whether it's an advantage or not is debatable. Ewan Murray was getting a wee bit of physio on a what looked like a, a hamstring tweak. Meanwhile, Tom Heathcote wallops the ball downfield and finds touch from the penalty midway. Oh, that's that wee speaker as well. Though. So, five metres into the Samoan half now. The size of that. Mule uh, Pola right at the front with two in the that's three it. standing second in the line. Steve Laurie. I'm sure he had that a bit of loudest. Ryan Wilson and Grant Gilchrist as jumpers. 
Alistair Dickinson's right at the tail of this five-man line. Keller goes up. Well done. Gets the ball beautifully to lead. Well, more like it. Out it goes. BT in midfield. Matt Scott still completely capsized. Heathcote goes back to cover the hack through by the Samoans. He does very well. Penalty to Scotland as Greg Thompson has taken out miles off the ball there. And that was, uh, I think, the Samoan captain, Paul yeah, Williams, who did that. Penalty to Scotland. And they needed it. Nice it was uh, Matt Scott was targeted Ayo. there, I felt, in midfield by a couple of Samoans. Yeah, great five-man line of options to using Johnny oh, Bucci, the decoy, and a very skillful player, Excellent Johnny Bucci. Excellent timing. Right, back to I'm going to get the coffee. I'll get back to you later. Uh, Samoan defence ready well. Backing down on the flank of the scrummage in the absence of Kelly Brown. Beatty picks up, whips the ball away. He's caught now, out it goes to Dunbar. Dunbar's well tackled there, we there in midfield. That was by Johnny Leota. Laidlaw gets ball, Strokos has it. Wild pass, he maybe thought there was obstruction. Jeff Cross gets ball, goes to ground, sets it back. Laidlaw again. Now Ryan Wilson, the rugby player, the lad of the sidestep and the, the fast feet, makes ground up over the halfway line. Here's Greg Tonks. Looking for Matt Scott and finding oh, him. Hot. Scott does well. Takes two or three men with him as he makes yardage. Wilson again. And then Laidlaw looking for quick ball. PT gets a take and give. No road through on the outside there. <laughs> for one of the Scots who was uh, kind of caught oh, flat footed. Laidlaw with a kick over the top. After it goes Lamont. Awkward bounce for Lamont. Right. It's into the in goal area. And so Ayalo. Stage not to touch two. Down. He kicks. Fine oh. touch. Short of the 10 metres line, but the game is still oh, wide. And oh, I think it was Tom Heathcote who was Try made a corner and away from the belt there. I'll find a place. And yeah. that would be another, that'd be another first grab if Peter Horn was to come on. I think Tom Heathcote kind of felt the, the full nice. force of the thing. I don't know, this doesn't Horn, usually work uh, for me, but he's not like it. Run straight into one of the, 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 the large forwards and he'll, he'll, uh, he's certainly feeling that. But I thought that was an excellent uh, option by Greg Laidlaw there. Like the Scottish boy uh, which knocked on the door a couple of times and ran into some pretty solid Samoan oh. defence. And he go. just kicked it down deep into the uh, Samoan 22 and, uh, and allowed the Scottish boys to kind of take a breather and, um, and regroup and now we've got a line of inside there, Simone Haft. Good I am. He's got his down in the deck, the Scots are looking for the referee maybe to stop the play because they're a man down and here's Kusin to touch. Wait, I'll get back to you. The, the midfield of the Samoans there, Laidlaw again, one Craig Laidlaw has turned round about the fringes, here's another Scottish handling error. Knocked on, just as Ryan Wilson picked it up and wanted to have a bit go into the open prairie. So again, handling, I don't know if I'm which was so good on Thursday, uh, and so secure, albeit against, yeah. you know, in an almost semi-opposed rather than a fully opposed game. It was looking very secure and very accurate. Today, under the pressure of the game, it's broken down a bit. It's just the, uh, the physicality that the, yeah. the Simones are bringing to that tackle area, contact area, they're bringing there. The, they're really putting the Scottish boys under pressure, but I think we're playing with some really good ambition and some really good ideas, but when that final pass is having to stick or that one really big collision is coming against us, we're, uh, we're losing the ball in contact, which is getting the Samoans and, and re relieving the pressure on them. Here's the scrummage. Jeremy Sua to put in for Samoa. Now, taking a wee while just to get the scrum set. There it is, and engaged. Remember, Murray Lowe is in the scrum now, and uh, so too is Steve Laurie and Jeff Cross. Here's Craig Tonks. Tonks likes to come up at them and uh, have a tilt at the opposition. Laidlaw gets ball back from the... the op oh, and Peter Horns. Pass was a hospital pass, and uh, Johnny Beatty got capsized badly there as the Samoans came up in numbers. Penalty here to Samoa as Beatty tried to retrieve the situation and conceded a penalty. So it's 17.24 and this penalty, 35 metres right in front of the post, shouldn't be a problem for James Soayalo. And uh, that was not the best of passes there by Peter Horn, I have to say. Not the best timed pass by Peter Horn. No, I think we're uh, just forcing it slightly coming out the back. Obviously, seven point game. <laughs> now looking like it's going to be ten. We're going to have to chance. Right there. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Grabbers. Right, that's what it looks like. 
Uh, look at the appetizers. I've got a brew on again. And uh, this thing was just magic. Definitely taking this with me. Nice wee bit of kit. And I dare say, if it rains, I'll you know, probably be able to dry some kit out of this. My boots or my, my jacket or something. There we go. Right, I'm going to try this and I'll let you know how it tastes like. Catch you in a bit. Sorry about that, I just knocked itself off. Must be a time limit. Well, that same battery's going already. Um, and I'd, I'll check the time. Can anybody suggest different type of batteries? Does the lithium batteries last longer than Duracell? If somebody can help me with that, I'd appreciate it. Anyway. That's enough for me. I'm going to get my kit cleaned, put away, and then chill for the rest of the afternoon. Minutes, for time. It's only back at 3 o'clock, so I'll be here till at 5. And uh, I'll be back out tomorrow if the weather's okay. Don't know what the forecast is. And I'm just going to sit and chill before I go back to work on Monday. So uh, I'll catch you guys later. And. Uh, Catch you. Bye.